we appreciate the things you do here at the Stock Exchange. Technology is very, very important. But what does your portfolio entail on a daily basis? Okay. Um, market operations and technology ensures that the exchange is up and running on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. So effectively, as you know, in the Nigerian market today, uh, we actually open at 9.30 in the market and closes at 14.30 in the morning. Mm. So our guys make sure the market is up and running on time, any uh, control issues are managed, any infractions are managed, and our technology and our interfaces are available to all our customers. Yeah, that's quite an exciting subject for us really, and in fact uh, we are embarking on a significant number of initiatives to actually move up our exchange. Uh, uh, if you look at the current trading system we've got, it's now with us for over 10 years. But I must say, it's still a very capable system. In terms of the volumes we're seeing, in terms of uh, our peak volumes when the market peaked, you know, that system is still capable of handling the trading volumes. But things have moved on. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do in the Nigerian market is actually change and enhance the experience of the customers and the stakeholders that actually operate in that market. So any technology change has to look at transforming that experience. It's got to be within the end-to-end -end context. So, and the trading engine is only one part of it. So we're backing on a process or on a program, a set of programs, which will actually do three things. The first part of that program is we want to bring in a very strong, powerful matching engine for quite a number of reasons. Number one is that we need to introduce new products. Yeah, and we need to have a system and a, 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 a trading engine which allows us to introduce new products in a very flexible manner, in a very responsive manner. Yeah, and allows us to actually take those products to the market in a very quick, robust uh, process. Mm -hmm. So that's one part of it. The second part of it is that the interface, our interfaces mm -hmm. between the participants of the market has mm -hmm. to improve. Yeah, when the old system was introduced, there was a major transformation. If you think that people were actually doing call over trading at that point, right, which is paper based, <laughs> and then they had computers, you know, that's one big jump. Now we've moved far, far beyond that. We're now talking about interfacing pre and post trading systems into the core engine. Yeah, mm. and that's the next level of transformation the market has to go to. Clearly, you know, the European, the American markets, uh, mm. and the Asian markets have actually embarked on this level of transformation. Mm. Yeah, and this is probably a new thing in, in, in Sub Saharan Africa, perhaps, mm. yeah, except maybe one or two exchanges. Mm. But something we feel is very, very essential for the Nigerian market. Mm. Uh, not only will it enhance our trading, but it will actually ensure that customer experience mm. actually is better. If you're buying shares today, you should be able to put your orders in. Yeah, it flows in automatically from your broker mm -hmm. into our system. You mm -hmm. get a confirmation back uh, and the shares are registered in the right places with the custodian as well. Mm -hmm. That's the level of transformation we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the, the new industry sectors that we have actually uh, en uh, enabled uh, uh, and the subsectors as well it is quite important because if you look at where we are today, we've got 33 sectors in the market uh, with about uh, over 200 shares listed. That is a lot of sectors for anybody or any analyst to follow. Yeah, so by actually simplifying these, I think we actually offer a better focus for the companies we actually operate in the exchange and we give people who want to restructure their portfolio a very tangible method of restructuring their portfolios as well. If you look at part of what's happening today in terms of uh, uh, investor education is many people buy one share or two shares and uh, if those shares go down, that's where they stock. Yeah, and most investors just freeze and hold on to it, hoping and thinking it to go back up. And in some cases it does, yeah. But by actually going on to, you know, sector analysis and actually advising investors, which we hope the broker community will do, you know, it actually offers them a means of spreading the risk across a number of sectors, but also looking at both liquid, illiquid uh, 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 shares, uh, shares that pay high dividends and shares, you know, that are growth shares. Mm. So we want to introduce that level of investor education mm. and uh, uh, which, which allows people to build more robust portfolios. Mm.
Okay. The, the way we've structured the sectors, you know, would hopefully, you know, uh, enhance whatever initiative the governments are doing. Yeah. So there are probably four sectors that we have grossly underrepresented. Uh, which uh, I believe, you know, there are lots of initiatives in the market, government and otherwise, around those. Agriculture. Agriculture is 40% uh, of our GDP, yet uh, there are only a couple of agro companies listed in the Nigerian stock market. Uh, uh, so that's a sector that we really want to drive and grow. Oil and gas. Uh, again, very, very little activity in terms of, you know, if you like, the, uh, the, the offshore oil and gas companies listed. There are a couple mm -hmm. of marketing uh, operations uh, uh, in oil and gas, uh, uh, which, which are on the exchange. And there are a couple more that we really want to work and uh, drive and grow. Within the exchange, you know, we, we always say, you know, the most important asset, and I mean this, uh, 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 even coming from a strong technology and products background, is the people, are the people we've got. People make things happen, yeah, and motivated people uh, are, are, are far better asset to have than, quite frankly, just smart people. Smart people not motivated. And we recognize that very much in, in what we are doing. One of the, but if you look at the targets that have been set, we've got pretty ambitious targets, which we believe are realistic, but we all have to roll up our sleeves to achieve those. Mm -hmm. To achieve those targets means we can't carry on business as usual. Yeah, we have to actually bring together, you know, uh, uh, number one, augment the team with additional skill set and retrain and regroup and up the game across the board for those inside exchange. Because that's really what's going to drive the exchange and by driving the exchange we can drive our national capital and our economy as well into the level of productivity we want. And on the internal staffing beat, you know, we have a clear organisation, we're very clear as to what roles and uh, people should be in, we've given the staff uh, about two months to step back, think through what roles, there's job descriptions, uh, we're running through a set of change programmes, we've had a, a, a one very detailed uh, change management meeting with staff. Uh, uh, and uh, in terms of recruitment, we're trying to find the best people we can find. And those mm. best people we can find will be within the exchange where those opportunities exist for those people. Mm. But they will be within Nigeria or outside Nigeria. That's the beauty of Nigeria as a country. Mm. We have people across uh, a wide range of skills mm. across the world and in our country as well. Mm. In terms of investor trading, mm. the kind of uh, system we're going to implement, the kind of automation, I talked about mm. pre-trading mm. and post-trading. <laughs> post so mm. the trading engine is only one part of it. The trading engine is the guts of it. Once we get a trading engine in, mm. then we'll be working with the broker-dealer community to actually transform that customer experience from pre-trading to post-trading. And what that means is that the man on the street should be able to sit in front of the terminal, you have put in a trade, and they have the assurance that trade will flow and be rubber stamped wherever that trade comes from, from a broker, from whoever, in near real time, into mm. the exchange system mm. and be cleared and settled and, and you get a confirmation back mm. in near real time as mm. well. So that's the level of automation that we're, we're, we're driving at mm. within the market. In terms of, uh, w one of the key things we did uh, uh, with the Council of the Exchange, the Council mm -hmm. is the Board of Directors, mm -hmm. is that uh, we formed a number of uh, focus uh, 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 groups in terms of the committees of the Council. You know, there is a committee that is very well focused on demutualization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's staffed by capable people within the overall Council. Mm -hmm. And we also now have, for the first time in the Exchange, a technology committee. Yeah, because mm -hmm. exchanges now are on in part mm. on the capabilities of the technology. You know, mm. I really do believe that yes, there's a lot of work on the on the table for us, mm -hmm. but uh, we have a uh, 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 you know the 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 managerial and the people mindset to be able to resource and staff these initiatives effectively simultaneously. Mm. Yeah, that is, uh, that is basically mm -hmm. the aim. And if, if you look at it, there's no question about it, it's a very, very stretched target. But if you look at the potential of our country, and mm -hmm. you look at the representation, like I was mentioning earlier on, on the mm -hmm. exchange, in terms of oil and gas companies, how many are listed today? Uh, agri 
companies are millennial listed. Power. Telecommunications. Telecommunications. You know, we have a lot of work. One of the one of the uh, uh, new initiative, one of the new uh, uh, departments we've brought into the exchange is uh, is a business development division within the exchange. The exchange has never had to go out and, if you like, prospect and find companies that have the prospect to list. Yeah, and actually work with them, nurture them, and and bring them to the market successfully. Mm -hmm. So we have a whole team that we, that is already been built. It's actually well mobilized now. Uh, uh, we're driving listing sales and listings retention mm -hmm. on our business development arm. Mm -hmm. So you know that agenda is actually now being transformed, so being translated into real practicalities in terms of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, R rules and regulations, uh, adherence to rules. I think uh, we've got to say, you know, uh, we're a self-regulating organization. Yeah, and uh, as a self-regulating organization, we are expected to actually enforce our rules. That's one of the roles of, 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 uh, of, 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 a, of a good exchange, you know. Uh, strong exchanges are very good on corporate governance and actually adhering to their rules. It's actually positive for the market, mm. yeah, as opposed to the other way around, mm. where people think lax rules or not. Mm. And I think uh, uh, on quite a number of areas, people have already seen our resolve in keeping and adhering to the rules. Mm. But keeping and adhering to the rules is one part of it. We will enforce our rules, let's be very clear about that. We need to enhance those rules and make them richer. Yeah, and we will make those richer in consultation as and when required. Yeah, mm. uh, 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 you know, but also, we, we also need to assist the companies who generally want to meet the rules but have some challenges in meeting the rules to actually meet those rules. So, you know, it, it, it serves us no purpose or joy to say, you know, oh, you've not been delivering your results on time, so bang, you know. So it's not, it's not, it's not like a it, just a policeman's it, it, it's job. It's not a policeman's job. It's to actually try and understand <laughs> the underlying this is why these guys are not mm. doing it if they're still not doing it mm. and actually help them to do it and give them the support. Mm. Again, our business development unit, which is, which is one of the new departments we set up, is geared towards just providing that level of support. Mm. And The issue of market confidence, we believe, uh, is, is one that cannot be solved by a magic bullet. There are several initiatives that have to be implemented at the same time to actually address the market confidence issue. And uh, from an exchange management perspective, you know, we, we've identified short-term initiatives, medium-term initiatives, and long-term initiatives. Yeah. We also recognize that you know, the, the, the game is not, oh, we fix the short term and then we start the medium term one. We have to actually start all of this simultaneously and many of these initiatives have already started. We're consulting with quite a wide number of groups and taking advice and input from a, a wide range of stakeholders as well in terms of those initiatives and how we translate those. I, I think it's clear to everybody we're in a beer market. It's not just a Nigerian thing, the, you know, mm. most stock markets are mm. back to their levels uh, 24 mm. months ago. Mm. But we have a unique uh, a situation here in the sense that we are still a, a, a developing uh, a market, so to speak. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure for, for those uh, uh, analysts uh, and investors, uh, opportunities based on fundamentals will arise and are still there in the market today.